Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, today we are doing FSA Packet 2. We are doing questions 1 through 11 today. So, remember to pause this video at any time that you need to slow things down or write things down. Elena paid for five pounds of oranges with a $20 bill. She received $5.50 in change. How much were the oranges per pound? Um, so what you could do here is, there's a few different ways that you could get the right answer, but um, what we are gonna do is set up, set up a two-step equation. So five pounds of oranges, and we don't know how much they cost, plus the $5.50 that she'll get back are all coming out of that $20 bill. So to find out how much the oranges are, we are gonna start by subtracting the $5.50. Remember on this part, you cannot use a calculator. This is on one of those no calculator days. Okay, so to solve for this, we just have to annex two zeros here. Make sure to line up your decimals. That is a 50. Okay, zero minus zero is zero. We cannot take five from zero, so we will have to borrow. The two becomes a one. This would be a 10, but then we have to borrow one from that, so now it's a nine, and this is a 10. So 10 minus five gives us five. Nine minus five gives us four, and one minus zero is one. So now we have five X equals $14.50. To solve for X, we need to divide both sides by five. This cancels and we are left with $14.50 divided by five. Five cannot go into one, but it can go into four, 14, two times. Two times five is 10, subtract and we get four, bring down our five. Five goes into 45, nine times. Nine times five is 45. Subtract and we get zero, bring down our zero. 5 goes into 0, 0 times. 0 times 5 is 0. Subtract, we get 0. We have nothing left to bring down, so we are done, with the exception of our decimal point. We need to make sure we bring that decimal point straight up. So the oranges per pound were $2.90. Again, there is multiple ways that you could have gotten this answer, but um, this is the way that we are practicing it. You will be using... Um, two-step equations and then multi-step equations next year in eighth grade, so we are preparing you for that with these two-step equations. Okay, a spinner is divided into four equal blue, green, red, and yellow sections. The table below shows the outcome after the spinner is spun 50 times. Based on the data from the table, what is the estimated probability? This is the same as experimental experimental probability the spinner will land on red. Well, the, it lands on red 15 times out of 50 total times. So this would be our fraction, but we can reduce it by dividing these both by five. 15 divided by five is three, and 50 divided by five is 10. So three tenths would be our fraction. You could write this as a decimal, and you could also write this as a percent. We'll put the percent down here. Okay, so here are your answers. Okay, a pizza pie is shared evenly between Ty and Gabe. So here's our pizza pie, and it is shared evenly. So Ty has an equal amount as Gabe does. Yesterday, Ty ate three-fourths of his share. Well, first we have to break these up into fourths. You can't break up Ty's into fourths without breaking up the whole pizza into fourths. So we went ahead and broke everything up. So now they each have four pieces. But they still have the same amount that they started with. This is all Ty's. This half. Okay? So Ty ate three-fourths of his. So one, two, three out of the four total. What percentage of the pie has Ty eaten? Well, he ate his three pieces. There are eight pieces total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It didn't say how much of his pie, his share of the pie did he eat. It said how much, what is the percentage of the pie, meaning the whole thing. So it's going to be that three pieces that he ate out of the eight total pieces of the pie. 
to solve for our percentage, we're just going to divide top by bottom. So again, we're putting the top number in the house and dividing by the bottom number. You cannot use a calculator on this. This is on one of those no calculator days. 8 cannot go into 3, so we need to put a decimal. And x is 0. 8 goes into 30 three times. 3 times 8 is 24. Subtract. 30 minus 24 is 6. Subtract or <laughs> Annex another 0, bring it down. 8 goes into 67 times. That's 56. 60 minus 56 gives us 4, annex another 0, bring it down. 8 goes into 45 times, 5 times 8 is 40, subtract and we get 40. Now, we are not done. This is a decimal. We just changed a fraction to a decimal. Now we need to change our decimal to a percent. So, if your decimal is 375 thousandths, to make it a percent, we have to move our decimal point two times to the right. So, 1, oops. <laughs> Two. That was terrible. Okay, so our percentage is 37.5%. Okay, a jar contains six black, four green, four yellow, and two white marbles. One marble is pulled out of the jar. Which of the following probabilities is correct? Well, we're talking about blue here, and it's saying that blue is two-tenths. Well, there are no blues here, so there's no way that there's two-tenths percent, two-tenths percent, <laughs> 20 percent that uh, we could land on blue. It's a zero percent chance because we have no blue. Black or white, well, there's six black, and there's two white. Six plus two is eight. We need to figure out the total amount. Six plus four is ten plus 4 is 14, plus 2 is 16. 8 out of 16 is actually 50%, so that is correct. If you divided 8 divided by 16, you would get 0 0.5, and then again move that decimal two times to the right to make it a percentage. Um, so B is correct. C says white is 1 tenth. Well, there are two white marbles, and we already know there's 16 total. If we reduce that, that's going to reduce to 1 eighth, not 1 tenth, so that's not right. Yellow is four, one fourth, so there's four yellows out of 16 total. That does reduce down to one fourth, so that's correct. Black, it says zero. Well, there's six blacks, so we already know that that is incorrect. Green, it says 25%. There are four green out of 16 total. This does reduce to one fourth, which is the same as 25%. If you divided 1 divided by 4, you would get 0 0.25 or 25 hundredths, and then move your decimal two places to the right, and that's how you get your percentage of 25%. So F is also correct. Okay. Which of the following is equivalent? Equivalent, <laughs> equivalent just means equal. Which of the following is equal to one fourth? Select all that apply. Again, when it says select all that apply, you are going to be picking more than one answer. Don't just choose one. So two fourths times two fourths. We need to multiply straight across. Two times two gives us four. Four times four gives us 16. This can be reduced by dividing the top and bottom numbers by the same thing. Four divided by four is one. 16 divided by four is four. So this does reduce to one fourth or this is equivalent to 1 fourth. 8 divided by 16 is simply 8 over 16. Remember, a fraction bar represents division, so we can just make this 8 sixteenths. This reduces to 1 half, not 1 fourth, so that's not correct. 2 times 1 gives us 2, 5 times 4 gives us 20, and a negative times a negative is a positive. 2 twentieths reduces to 1 tenth, so that's not correct. 3 divided by 12, again, we can write this as a fraction. Why did I just write 3 fourths? 3 divided by 12 is 3 over 12, and then we can reduce that by dividing these both by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so this is equivalent to 1 fourth. And then this last one is negative 5 over 1. We'll make this a, a fraction by putting it over 1. And then we are multiplying that times... Um, negative 1 over 20. So this is 5 over 20 because 5 times 1 is 5, 1 times 20 is 20, and a negative times a negative is a positive. We can reduce this by dividing these both by the same number, which is 5. 
5 divided by 5 is 1, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So again, this is equivalent to 1 fourth, so E is correct. Okay, what, <laughs> what? A square pyramid is sliced vertically as shown. What shape is created by the cross section? Well, if you can see, if we were to cut this open, it's sliced down here, and if we were to open this up this way, you are gonna get this shape, which is a triangle. If you were to cut it um, horizontally and open it, it would be a square. It would be the same as the base, which for this one is a square. Okay, it says, what is two-fifths written as a decimal? Again, a fraction is simply a division problem. So we're going to take that top number, put it in the house, divide it by the bottom. Five cannot go into two, but it goes into 24 times. Four times five is 20. Subtract and we get zero. Simple as that. Four tenths is our answer. Again, you're not using a calculator on this section. The change in the cost of gas at pa <laughs> <laughs> past gas. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> at pace gas station from 2000. 16 to 2019 is shown in the table below. <laughs> if the cost of gas is was two dollars, <laughs> okay. If uh, if the cost of gas was two dollars and sixty five cents in 2016, <laughs> what was what was the price of the gas at the end of 2019? So, it was two dollars and sixty five cents at the beginning here, and then we added. 8 cents to it, which is this year, and 5 plus 8 gives us 13, carry the 1, 1 and 6 make 7, bring down our decimal point, 2 plus 0 is 2. So after this year it was $2.73. Then we subtracted 22 cents from that. So bring your decimal point straight down, 3 minus 2 is 1, 7 minus 2 is 5, 2 minus 0 is 2. So after this year, it was $2.51. $2.51 minus 20 cents. 1 minus 0 is 1. 5 minus 2 is 3. Bring your decimal point down. 2 minus 0 is 2. So after this year, it was $2.31. And then at the end, it went up 3 cents. 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 0 is 3, 2 plus 0 is 2. So we ended with $2.34. And we are talking about money here, so um, a dollar sign is good. <laughs> Damien has a bag that contains... <laughs> That contains five red marbles, two blue marbles, two green marbles, and one black marble. Without replacement, he pulls out two marbles. What is the probability he will pull out a red marble first and then a green marble? Well, there are five red marbles. We need to count the total. Five plus two plus two. Five plus two plus two plus one. Five plus two is seven, eight, nine, ten. So the total amount is ten. Remember, our total always goes on bottom. Okay, and when we are pulling out two marbles, we are going to be multiplying those probabilities together. So this is our first marble that we pulled out. And then our second one is green. So the probability of getting pulling out a green is two. But remember, we did not replace that first marble. So we took that one out. So instead of 10 being our total on the bottom, now it is nine because we did not replace that first marble. So five times two is 10. 10 times nine is 90. We can reduce this by dividing these both by 10. 10 divided by 10 is one. 90 divided by 10 is nine. So one ninth is our answer. That can also be written as a decimal, but to do that, we would have to, let me write second here. We would have to divide the top by bottom. Nine cannot go into one, but it can go into 
10 one time. 1 times 10 is, I mean 1 times 9 is 9, subtract, and we get 1, because 10 minus 9 is 1. Annex another 0, bring it down. 9 goes into 10 again once, 1 times 9 is 9. You see there's a pattern starting to develop. So um, it is actually going to be a repeating decimal, which is um, 0 0.1 repeating. The double box plot below represents data for the overall grades of two math classes. What is the difference in the median between the two sets of data? Well, first we need to know what the median of a box plot looks like. It's this line directly in the middle of your box plot. That is the median. So the median of this top one is 65, and the median of this bottom one is 60. We are wanting the difference. Difference means subtract. So we are subtracting these two. 65 minus 60 is 5. So our answer is 5. On the coordinate grid below, draw a triangle with one line of symmetry. You need to make sure that when you are doing this that it is exact. So I picked a point and then I went out two to the right and then two to the left of that line. And that would be my line of symmetry straight down. Remember a line of symmetry means that if you folded it that the two sides would match. match. <laughs> and if you'll notice if we folded it in half top to bottom it would not match. So there is just one line of symmetry straight down the middle. Okay, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I miss y'all so much. Um, I hope you guys are staying safe, and please ask me if you need help. Holler at me. Bye.